It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday Night Special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, I missed last week, so we got to make up for it this week. I have a large number of topics to share with you in this evening's video. So, we stopped by Congleton Hollow, which is down in... Like, basically the very geographic center of Oregon. It's pretty close to the geographic center. And, you know, we found some cool little limb casts, right? Like, you know, some stuff like this, different castings. I mean, it's cool because it's, well, it's agate and <laughs> filled the void of a piece of wood. Uh, however, there is one that I think is quite, quite exceptional because it is a double casting. So we have our wood texture here. Now on this side, I initially thought that was uh, like a druzy coating of quartz crystal. And you can kind of see, well, it's, it's not. Um, <laughs> when I um, look at it under the microscope, I can see that we have well, a couple of things going on. We have the impression of larger quartz up at the top, and then the sparkly bits is actually the impression in Chalcedony of Druzy Quartz. There's no actual crystal there, merely just the small impression of it. So it's kind of a double or even a triple casting, I guess. So that's kind of an exceptionally cool piece. And I initially learned that not by looking under my microscope. Because I love, look, I love the microscope and I'll tell you kind of why here. You can learn so much about rocks and minerals by looking at the small things. Now I know it doesn't make for great content. It's not like, hey, check out this giant, giant agate or what, you know, whatever the thing is. But I would have probably gone the rest of my life having not known that that was a, like a double or triple casting, however you want to look at it, if it wasn't for this right here. So you don't need to get this specific loop, but I would, Highly, highly recommend. If you do not have a jeweler's loop, they range from eight bucks to probably 30 bucks. Um, get a 10 power triplet. You will learn so much about rocks and minerals, mineralogy, structure, all of that by simply having this. Okay. Like I view this, it's like the indispensable tools. You know, I think we can all agree, we can all agree that. Things like the rock hammer are an important tool <laughs> to rock hounding. Uh, those things definitely go together. You know, uh, I cannot stress it enough. There's a whole world beyond what you can see with your with just your eyeballs, and it's uh, important important to learn about if you want to get good at this. A prime example of that is this right here. Um, well, you're probably looking at this and you're like, oh, okay, cool, basalt. You know, maybe you can see that vug right there and how it's maybe a little bit of a different color on your screen. We simply saw that and uh, it's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, break out the loop, right? Hold it up. This one actually has a little, you can put a battery in this, but like eats through the batteries. Don't get a, don't get one with a light. The lights are generally quite weak. So, you know, I'm looking through this and I can see there's something very interesting in there. Take it home, wash it up. And we have ultra, ultra red fire opal in that bug. Well, that tells me a couple of things. If we have just a lining of it in that bug, well, maybe there'll be more in the same place that I found that. Now, you know, you could have always kept exploring and uh, found like a chunky little piece of a uh, red fire opal. However, investigating stuff like that with your uh, $10 loop knows, it'll let you know that you're on the right course, the right track for it. I've been, uh, mildly frustrated lately you know there's quite the discrepancy that i see between the reality of rock hounding mineralogy even lapidary for that matter and the reality of it and it's certainly a challenge to try to 
it's like walking a tightrope, you know, one way or another and you're going to fall off. Um, I don't exactly know what to do because the reality is that on the internet, things that are super crazy, hyped up stuff gets lots and lots of views and lots and lots of clicks. And when you have a message that you want to put out there, lots of people listening to that message is kind of the way you would measure that. However, you start to approach this kind of like deception zone, a zone of hype bait and clickbait, and it starts to portray the hobby not in a realistic fashion. And I kind of don't know what to do, you know? Uh, I've often just kind of been like, cool, let people do what they want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's a, it's hard. It's hard um, to be on the back end looking at the hobby and been like, oh, it's like this calm, cool, peaceful, enjoyable activity. And I try to portray it as such. And um, it that that doesn't get the <laughs> get the views. So I don't know. Yeah, I, certainly a little frustrated sometimes as of late. All things pass, though, and uh, I'm sure my frustration will pass as well. But yeah, you know, um, it's hard. It, it's hard to take something which is technical, enjoyable, and make it super, super exciting to be able to get clicks at times. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. You let me know. Am I overthinking it? <laughs> One thing that I uh, maybe have been overthinking a little bit has been the ultrasonic cleaners. So I have two, right? And if you watched the video doing the micro mounting, you've seen both of these. Okay, let's not blind you here. So I have two ultrasonic cleaners that I've been testing with rocks. Uh, cheap guy over there, right? So that's like $50. Uh, very expensive one. Very, oh, oh, fingerprints shown there. Um, man, it certainly seems like you get what you pay for with the ultrasonic cleaners. Uh, huge price difference between them. That one, I believe they say that you can run it for like 10 minutes. That one over there. Um, before you need to like, I don't know, like let it cool down or whatever. This one seems like it's continuous duty um and higher quality build you know this thing like doesn't really flex this thing is like uh thinner all of that really hard to compare the two though you know um this one definitely cleans better and when i say clean i'm talking about like getting grit off of things getting polish off of things and it's very hard to like compare the two um and one thing I do like about this, right? So we have the knob here. Check this out. It's like a very authoritative ding when you uh, when it ends. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, so far, I would say having an ultrasonic cleaner has been very beneficial. I would see. I would think that somebody that is into rock tumbling could absolutely utilize one of these for getting like that like you don't want to transfer grit between your stages and something like that could get it out of even like the most fine, fine cracks and you could uh, inspect with your jeweler's loop. Make sure you got it all. <laughs> I do have a very brightly polished, I think I did a pretty good job on this, rock to show you. All right, so this here, is a Brazilian agate. Now, some of you have already seen this. Uh, I did cut this in hopes of being able to find some iris and, you know, have some fine parallaxed banding. And here we are. Look at that. That is very blue. Um, I think it came out pretty good. You know, a lot of the Brazilian agates are... They are... <sighs> have a lot of, like browns and stuff in them so having one that's like yellow and white and blue very cool this though does not belong in my collection it belongs in somebody else's collection i really prefer 
having found all of my own rocks. Obviously back here are gifts in the shop. In the house though, it's gotta be stuff that we found. This is gonna be going to one of y'all that are members here on the channel. Um, for those of you that don't know, I do have the channel membership turned on and uh, down below, if uh, you're logged into your account, you can see the join button under some of the videos. If you're not already a member, we do all kinds of extra videos over there. We do a monthly giveaway. It's a lot of fun. It's a little more like less polished content, but still quite good. And this is one of the giveaway rocks for this month, that Brazilian agate right there. So uh, if you're interested, if you like the type of content that I do here on the channel and you feel like supporting even farther, please uh, consider becoming a member. I don't typically tell people where to go rock hounding. You know, I'm like, you know, you can go where you want to go, get what you want to get. I get what I want to get. And sometimes there's some overlap there. But there are occasions where I'm like, something opens up that's special that I personally love. And I definitely encourage y'all to go check it out, okay? What I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Lucky Strike Mine, all right? So if you are in Oregon, Washington, maybe Idaho, maybe Idaho, the Lucky Strike Mine in Central Oregon, which is a Thunder Egg Mine, Feed Egg, will be open September 10th and 11th only from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I think this is amazing, okay? So their eggs, yeah, I have some exceptional eggs from the Lucky Strike. I think these are quite good. And they have not been open past two years. And when we went, uh, they did have some, some tools there for everybody. I think at this point, this 10th and 11th opening, no tools, bring all your own stuff. And realistically, you should have all of your own tools. You know, don't depend on a feed egg to provide for you. But like, these are exceptionally good eggs. And uh, yeah, I mean, go get them. They are charging $3 a pound for their eggs. And I think... Um, if we can make a good showing out there, I personally can't go, unfortunately. I wish I could. If I could, I would. <laughs> but I think if they can have a big turnout of people going out, doing some digging, getting some cool eggs, they might be opening for a 2023 dig season out there. Check out that double. If that's not just a perfect example with uh, fortification, waterline banding, um, crystal growth, like all just it, that's a good egg. They, they have some very, very good eggs. I would say that, um, much of what I have gotten from there is, geez, don't want to blind you. <laughs> I would say that much of what I've gotten out there is very good. I would definitely not dig an egg smaller than that. So some of the littler eggs, which you might be tempted to, to go for. Well, maybe that's not the best example. Let's grab it. Okay. So like an egg from Lucky Strike like this, which you might be tempted to pick up, generally has a very, very small, like little cavity in there that could be filled with calcidney. Um, generally, going in the bigger route, you're going to be better off. So that's my advice. Go check them out. Support your local feed digs, support your local miners. Stuff like that goes away. You know, if uh, people don't go out, why, why, sh why should they <laughs> continue to exist, I guess, you know? Um, something to take into consideration. I mean, uh, when we went out there, it was, an, we had an excellent time. Um, per camping is everywhere. Man, it's, uh, there's so many other spots. Like, I don't know if I would probably go out to the Lucky Strike exclusively for like two days, like whatever. You could probably get some good eggs in a shorter period of time than that. And then, I mean, down the road, there's Whistler Springs, there's White Fur. Uh, you can go to the Polka Dot. You can swing into Richardson's Ranch, right? Uh, uh, Richardson's Rock Ranch. You can buy yourself some Brazilians if you want. 
and uh, get, get a high-speed sander. There's so much in that general area, including some fossils. A lot of these places we've uh, listed up on the website, currentlyrockcounty.com, and you can go check that out as well and kind of do some trip planning stuff. I've been thinking, been thinking about putting together a little book. <laughs> uh, and now I know um, some people certainly prefer just like a printed thing. And I have an idea for a publication, um, which we might be working on this this winter, you know. Um, I have, I have a good idea. It's not something like you've probably seen before. Well, I know it does, nobody's ever made a, a like rock hounding guide or whatever, quite like what I'm envisioning in my mind. So I think uh, it would be highly, mm, highly accepted by people. I think it'd be pretty good. Um, let me, let me know what you prefer. Do you prefer like the format of like the website? And just having things online that you can look at or do you want like that physical tangible copy because you know with the website like you can always like download a page offline you can do all kinds of stuff and the reason i really focused a lot on the website is because i can continuously update stuff versus something printed once it's in print and in somebody's hands that's like the the line that's like the pause um so I've kind of thought about different ways to do a publication about rock hounding. Um, I've thought about having making a publication, but then having updated versions for free online to people that bought it. Because um, I want to be able to disseminate information about localities, different topics, and keep it very, very up to date. Because that's one of the problems that all of the rock hounding guidebooks have in common is that Generally, there's this lag, right? So let's say you write something and it takes you a year or two to write it. And the stuff that you started with at the beginning of the writing is maybe two years old. And then by the time you hit, hit your deadline with a publisher, you have like another six months to a year until it goes into print. And then somebody buys it potentially a year later. And when you buy that book that's newly newly published some of the information in it could be two three four years old and I, I think that that lag that process is just not a good way of putting out info but what if there was like a supplementary thing you know like you have this publication and then for more information you can see the latest and greatest updates online I don't know um I, I would really love to hear people's thoughts on something like that. Well, I think this about wraps it up for this week. Um, I'm going to drop some links down below. Go check out some of this stuff. Pay attention to your tiny rocks and minerals. Get yourself that jeweler's loop. If you're around and you can... Uh, Go say hello to the people at the Lucky Strike. Let them know I sent you. It would uh, help everyone out. Look at that egg. Look at it. I love it. Somebody said it looks like a ghost. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a, like a, a, a chubby Casper. <laughs> All right, everybody. Y'all take care. Thanks for coming by, listening to what I have to say, and I will catch you on the next video.